Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. Happy Wednesday. So, today's going to kick off our first uh, Wednesday meeting, Wednesday service. Still don't know what this is going to be. There's a call, what we're going to, it's going to be named or called or kind of what it is, but the one of the thoughts that I was having is having a little bit of a of a more of a teaching kind of thing about scripture and, and, and that kind of thing and and you know a little bit more like a deep cut of things. <clears throat> so so one of the things too that I kind of want to bring up is if anybody's watching this and you got any suggestions, um you know bring them up. So you can actually, I think you can actually uh, comment on YouTube uh, with things. So if there's something that you want to see or something you've wondered about or something in the Bible or something like that, and you want to uh, talk about it, um, just bring it up. And then that, that we'll pull that out as a, as a topic one day. So, but this morning, what I want to do is, you know, because we're starting all this, and this was actually a suggestion when we first started, when we first started doing these online sermons and, and stuff was one of the person, uh, the congregants, one of the members of our congregation um, brought up, he said, you need to do the Lord's Prayer uh, before you start. Because when we first started, I guess, wasn't doing it. We just went straight into Scripture. So, uh, Mr. Kimsey, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Kevin Kimsey brought that up to me. So, um, so, been doing it like that ever since. And, and that's actually one of the things I wanted to, to talk about today was actually the Lord's Prayer. Let's check this out real quick. I've actually got here, hang on. My workstation. Here you go. There's three Bibles right there. Three Bibles worth. And there's more, but these are these three. <laughs> so <clears throat> different translations. This one is the um, English Standard Version. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I like that one. This uh, new international version. I think a lot of people might have this one. This is one of the. This is actually the first Bible I started uh, really preaching out of. Didn't know anything about the Bible. Picked this thing up. Got the guy actually took it to the bookstore and got that one. <laughs> and this one is a uh, study Bible, MacArthur Study Bible, and it's based on the uh, New American Standard Bible (NASB). So all these things are just. <clears throat> they're different translations, and they're modern translations that you can, you know, it's a lot easier to read and, and stuff like that. But um, what I want to do is read um, this chapter. It's Luke chapter 11, okay? And it starts in verse 1 there. So this is actually the Lord's Prayer. And um, now I've got this one here. I'll just read it out of this one. Um so it's, uh, it's basically one, well, well, we'll go through it. So it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. So, that's the Lord's Prayer. So the, the Lord's Prayer that we, that we say and most people are familiar with and that kind of thing, this is where this comes from. So, it's pretty cool that you can actually see. Now, like you said, you know, because think about where there's some extra words that, that we have in there. And maybe some of these words are a little bit different. But this is actually where this where the Lord's Prayer is derived from. Um, and, you know, and it's, it's cool just to actually see it in Scripture and that kind of thing. But one of the things that you got to be, when you're reading Scripture, 
and you're trying to get down to it. Because one, one of the things I want to do is kind of, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about the demystification of Scripture and that kind of thing. Uh, you can't demystify the Word of God. Because the Word of God is mysterious. Now, I think if you try to take the mystery away, you're missing a point. Because everybody who picks up a Bible and reads a verse is going to have certain things that come out to them. Because that's the Holy Spirit moving. That's why it's called the living Word of God, not a static Word of God. It's not just flat words on a page. If you read Scripture and let it work through you and work on you, the words kind of stand up. You know that they're they're become almost three D like you know because they they're touching you they're, and they touch everybody a different way because it's God working on you working through you and that Holy Spirit you know with the Word of God going back and forth so something that that you have in Scripture is you know and and a, and a lot of the stuff that we have. You're not trying to take the mystery away, but you do want to take about any kind of commentary because that's one of the things about like this Bible is a study Bible. So you've got the scripture stuff up here, right? And you got all this commentary at the bottom. Okay? So what you want to try to do is remove any commentary. Stick to word of God. Okay? Like this Bible is really kind of cool here. This one I first started with because it's nothing but Word of God. There's no commentary. There's no nothing in here like like that, like in a study Bible. Is Jesus' words are in red letters. <laughs> Actually, I had a guy ask me what kind of commentary I used. And he said, uh, "What your Bible got any commentary? I said, I don't know. It's got red letters. <laughs> so he kind of laughed at me with that one. So. Um, but so, so what you've got to do is kind of remove some of that, as much of it as you can, because it's extra noise. It's what somebody else is thinking about the passage. Well, you don't need somebody else's influence. You want to get to the Word of God. You want to get God's Word influencing you, not somebody else's view on God's Word influencing you, right? So something else that you've got to kind of pay attention to is a lot of times in Scripture, you know, because you got this thing broken down into chapters and verses and all this stuff. And at the, cha at the top of chapters, a lot of times they'll give you a heading. Like this thing, the heading on the very top of chapter 11 says, The Lord's Prayer. Okay, well, that's great. But, you know, it, you got to be careful even reading those things because it's trying to, that kind of gives you some kind of insight onto what's next. Well, if you read this, if that wasn't there, you might get something completely different out of that passage if that heading wasn't there, right? So you got to be very careful even with the headings in the book. You want to get as close to, so just try not to read headings at first. You want to be in touch with God's Word and, and do that, just you and God hanging out. So, and because, so the cool thing about it is... If you actually um, kind of take take that thing there, the Lord's Prayer, is like, okay, that's kind of cool. That's how Jesus kind of gave us this, this thing. And But it actually doesn't stop there. So if you actually just keep reading and blast through some of these headings, like this MacArthur Study Bible has got different headings after that. So it's like it, it wants you to stop. Well, God didn't tell you to stop. It's somebody put a heading there that's trying to tell you to stop. So if you actually keep going with this passage, let's see what else Jesus has to say and go all the way until he actually stops because he didn't stop there. So here's here, I'm reading out of this Bible now. So, now Jesus was praying in a certain place and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me, for the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. 
I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead, uh, instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That is actually the end, the, the, total, the total thing of when Jesus was asked by one of his disciples of teach us how to pray. He said all of that. He didn't just say this top part. So if you think about it, as you go through here, you know, every, you know the, the Lord's Prayer does not include talking about, you know, instead of an egg, we'll give him a serpent and give him good gifts and, and knocking and being so persistent that somebody, you know, comes and answers what you're trying to do. It, it, right? You don't say that every time you say the Lord's Prayer. So, so this down here is given examples of how to, how to pray. Because think about it. That's what the disciple asked. He didn't ask Jesus, what words should I say? And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up. They think, I don't know how to pray. I don't say it the right way. I don't say all the thuses and thous and whatever. There's no, that's, that wasn't here. And if you're going to find an authority on how to pray, wouldn't you go to Jesus? So when Jesus, because if you want to see something else, Jesus prays. If you want to see something, he's always praying. Jesus is always praying. Every time he gets a chance, he's praying. That's why do you think a disciple said, can you teach us how? And Jesus simply said, look, when you pray, you need to have some structure to it. Like uh, acknowledge the Father, hallowed be your name. And he's saying, your kingdom come. So he's talking about the Father here. Your kingdom come, right? E give us each day our daily bread. Uh, and forgive us our sins. For forgive us our sins as we forgive anybody who's indebted to us. Which, think about it, it's a big deal because with the Hebrews, remember every seven years they forgave, forgave, sin, uh, forgave debt. And they were supposed to forgive debts you know, kind of joyfully. I mean, they didn't necessarily want to do it, but if, if they were indebted to somebody, they their debts were forgiven, so it was right. And and lead us not into temptation. So it's not so much uh, uh, exact words to say, but it's a framework. So don't lead us into temptation. Forgive us our sins as like we forgive other people indebted to us. You know, and your kingdom come and and Father, you know, God, the hallowed be your name. Your name is greater than any name in anything. And when I pray, pray with persistence. So as I'm knocking, the door will be opened, and I'm asking I will receive. Right? And and giving good gifts, right? If if I'm asking and the Father hears my prayer, He's gonna give me good gifts, not gifts that are gonna hurt me. Because a lot of times people pray and they say, Well, my prayer's not answered. I didn't get what I wanted. Maybe you don't get what you want, but you get what you need. Maybe the Father's not gonna give you something that you want because maybe it's gonna hurt you. Maybe it's a serpent in disguise. And you just don't know that's that's what it is. So instead of giving you what everything you want, but think about this. Give us our, each day our daily bread, everything we need to sustain us. That's more than food. Hopefully there's a lot of love in there too. Don't we need that to sustain us every day? So when you go back and you read this again, and when you say the Lord's Prayer, right? Which we're, I'm not saying don't say the Lord's Prayer. I'm saying say it. But when you say it, think about all the meaning behind that. Think about everything that went into this. Jesus didn't just say, say this. He said, say your prayers and make sure you frame it up in a proper framework and think about how you should pray with this persistence and knowing that God is going to give you 
everything that you ask for, but he's not going to give you something that's going to harm you. He's going to give you what you need. And he will answer all prayers. Prayers do not come back unanswered. They might not come back the way we want it, but they don't come back unanswered because God loves us. And, and he's always, if, if we ourselves that are full of evil, evil and sin know how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly Father give you? So now when you're saying the Lord's Prayer, put all of that together in the framework. So kind of strip away all that stuff, all that doctrine that's been laid on top of all this stuff for years for you, right? And get back to Scripture. Just get back to God's Word. Let, let God's Word talk to you. Let the Holy Spirit that resides in you, you know, receive that and help work on you with it. Because that what's, that's what God desires for you. He desires just nothing but goodness. It's a very cool place to be. So, when you go out today in the world, take this with you. Not, you don't have to necessarily take this with you, right? But take this, put it in your mind, in your heart, own it, wear it around, right? And go out into the world and go out and be the church. Just go out as you, and as when you run into somebody, hold on to those words that Christ gave us, that the Father is the best father out there that's going to give us everything good that we need and nothing that would cause us harm. So go out and spread that out. Spread that word out there. Be the church. Go and be the church. Let's pray. Thank you, good Lord, for taking care of us. Thank you for giving us your son and the models through that we should truly work through. Thank you for letting us read your word and be touched by it. And thank you for changing our hearts and our minds into something that resembles what you would have us be. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.